once again, back to nerves and ultrasound on, on, on how that's used. Carpal tunnel syndrome can also be diagnosed with the use of ultrasound. In the presence of carpal tunnel symptoms, which would be numbness in your hand, pain in your hand, that resolves with shaking, that wakes you up at night, that's worse with a fixed position or repetitive motion, it's generally carpal tunnel syndrome, but we can't prove it. We gotta make sure that nothing's wrong with the nerve or something else is not going on prior to uh, participating in a surgery. So in this case, um, with ultrasound, we can see the nerve pretty well. I'll put an arrow on it um, so that you can see the nerve. So this is the nerve below the muscle. So this is a muscle here. This is nerve here. This is a tendon. So you can kind of see the different echo textures of nerve versus tendon. And I can follow this median nerve up. We see the median nerve. It kind of splits into two bundles and there's a uh, structure right here. But if we look closely at that structure, that structure is beating. That's actually a, called a persistent median artery. Sometimes that's really good to know if you're going to go have a surgery because your anatomy is a little bit different. And then we have a nerve here and nerve here. Generally in most people that nerve stays together. Uh, but nonetheless, this is not a, a, a a, a, uh, this is this, this nonetheless this is a very common uh, variation on the median nerve. So as far as diagnosing uh, carpal tunnel syndrome on ultrasound, we have to know how big the median nerve is. So in this case, we're going to freeze this picture and we're going to measure this. We're going to trace it um, and then we're going to see how big the volume of this nerve is. So we trace around uh, the median nerve. In this case, we only want the nerve structures and we go back and up and we measure. And then we've got to, in this case, measure it again, secondary to it being bifid or two nerve, or one nerve that's split into two. And so we'll go around this one and back around, and we'll add those two volumes up. If you look on the bottom of the screen, I can maybe point to it for you. Um, this down here, so area number one or circle number one is six millimeters squared. So if we move the decimal point, it turns into millimeters. So we've got six millimeters squared. And the area of the second nerve is also six millimeters squared. So based on uh, research or studies, there's a, a, a survey called the CTS-6. In the presence of symptoms, meaning night pain, numbness, those types of things, weakness, uh, that gives you a very high likelihood of having carpal tunnel syndrome based on uh, symptoms alone. However, in the presence of a median nerve area greater than 10 millimeters squared, that's pretty much 100% carpal tunnel syndrome, and the cause would be compression of the median nerve at the carpal tunnel. So in this case, we're at 12 millimeters squared in the presence of symptoms, hence we have carpal tunnel syndrome. So if we had to, um, and another way to diagnosis would be with nerve conduction studies or uh, EMGs, that's been the gold standard for, for, for a long, long time, but now with ultrasound, we don't necessarily need that test anymore um, to secure the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome. It doesn't ensure that this is the only thing going on with you, but it does uh, secure the fact that you do have carpal tunnel syndrome. Then if we go further down with uh, this anatomy lesson, we can see the median nerve now underneath the carpal tunnel. So we have this tunnel right here, this ligament over the top. It's kind of dark down below it, but these are all flexor tendons. If you move your fingers for me, please, you'll see these tendons moving and this nerve just kind of jiggling over the top. This is why carpal tunnel syndrome happens. You you're actually have a decreased, your, your nerve swells up in a space that doesn't change sizes. So in order to fix this problem, we just transect or cut this ligament, which allows the roof of the tunnel to open and resolve uh, your symptoms. But the diagnosis is now made easier through the use of ultrasound because we can see the structures that we want to see. We can see the structures that we don't want to hit, which include the ulnar artery and the ulnar nerve. And we can ensure that all these structures are out of the way. There's even some tiny nerves that we can see now is if we follow this nerve now back down towards the hand, you'll see this little black dot leave the nerve. It's right there. We go back down, see that little black dot? That's the palmar cutaneous branch. That's the most likely nerve to be injured during a common uh, carpal tunnel release. I can now see that nerve and ensure that it doesn't become traumatized cut, uh, which makes this uh, procedure a little bit safer uh, with the use of fully guided uh, carpal tunnel release. But the diagnosis is also uh, secured a little bit more easily as well. So hopefully that shows you um, a few things as far as what the utility of imaging with uh, different diagnostic and interventional procedures.